you know, today we've been working mostly with, with living things. We started with the shark and then we went on to owl pellets, of course, which, which come from an owl. And so I thought it'd be a good idea for our other hands-on activity to work with these blue morpho butterfly wings. And Dr. Bradovich, he's going to be here to help me because he's a biologist, biochemist, and he knows a lot more about life science than I do. Mm -hmm. So he'll, he'll be here to help me out if I get stuck, which is probably going to happen. But yeah, we'll continue this theme of living things today. And here I have a blue morpho butterfly. You can sort of see what the uh, I, insect I looks like. Yeah. I have a question. How come it's not blue? Well, I guess when the animals or the insects' wings are Maybe closed. Maybe he has bad eyes. <laughs> blue and brown start with the same letter, so he thinks they're the same. Let's open, let's open oh. their wings. Oh. Oh, that. my lanta. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Great. So yes. you're saying that the blue is on the inside of the wing. The, that the, yeah. When it's yes. Made, so you're only seeing the brown. Well, when its wings are closed, right. but when it opens them, boy, then, you, sure can see the then you can see the blue party, yeah? Then you can see it. And we've all given you some of these blue morpho butterfly wings for you to do some experiments with at home. And that's what we're gonna do right now. And it, this, this blue color is, is very interesting for a couple of reasons. Uh, first, blue is a color that we tend not to see in animals. Is that, is that correct? Not often. Not often. Well, we could, I guess we have the blue whale. Is that blue? Yes, parts of it. Kind of, okay. Mm. Yeah. So blue is a very rare color in, in the animal kingdom. Uh, there's, a, there's a second thing about these wings that are interesting and different. And that's the fact that this blue color doesn't come from a pigment or a dye. Now, a pigment or a dye would be a, a chemical or made of molecules, and that's usually where we get color from. This sort of gray color that you see in my shirt, there are pigment molecules or there are dye molecules that cause the gray color. But what's interesting about these blue wings is that there's no pigment in there. So hmm. where in the world does the color come from? Hmm. Well, the color comes from little tiny physical structures in the wing that they're tough to see. You can't actually see them with your eyes, but those structures cause the wing to interact with light in a special way. And I think in your, in your book from home, the, the uh, experiment book that we sent home, there's a little link that you can click on and that'll take you to a research article where people used a very powerful microscope to look at the surface of these wings. And when they do that, they see these tiny structures. They kind of look like, get out of here, Jerry. Or Bob, we said Bob. Oh, Bob, okay. Jerry. They kind of look like this, kind of tree-like structures. And there's a whole forest of these, millions of them, millions of them are on the surface of this wing. And these structures, they interact with light in a special way. You see, between, let's say, we'll put another one over here, or at least half a one, like this. So here's our structure, our second structure. These structures are called lamellae. And so there's these physical, are they made of proteins, Dr. Bradovich? Oh, yeah. Okay, so yeah. they're made of proteins, and they're solid structures that stick up from the surface of the wing. Uh, like, like a whole forest of trees. And then in between the lamellae is air. And when the light hits these lamellae, it just so happens that any color of light except for blue, it kind of gets canceled out. And the blue light that hits this wing, it, it gets reflected really well. And so it bounces off of the wing really well. And that blue, in a sense, gets amplified. And that's the color that we see. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. So the carpenters wanted to know, when its wings are closed, is it most likely on a brown branch? Does it? Yes. Yeah. 
Morpho butterflies are found in forests and they tend to sit on branches or trunks of certain types of trees. And when they close their wings, they're largely camouflaged. When they open the wings, the wings are to startle or they're oh. for communication or they, because uh, against the air, uh, a bird that uh, is looking at them in the, in the sky won't be able to distinguish them if they're looking at them essentially from a particular vantage point, they'll be camouflaged to the bird. And that's what the carpenter said. So it's a camouflage. Yep, it's a camouflage. Mm -hmm. Very nice. But that color of blue too also serves an important communication role between the different butterflies, especially male and female butterflies. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my blue morpho butterfly wing or at least one of them. And we're gonna, we're just pour a little bit of water on it, see what happens. So I've got some water here. And can they do this at home? Oh yeah, this is all, this is all stuff you certainly can do if you like. So I'm gonna take, this and we're going to go ahead and I'm going to add a few drops of water on there. Oh, look at that. It rolls right off. Mm. Clayton, are you getting that? Okay, good. See it, it, it actually, I'll hold it up to the overhead cam. See how it beads up on the surface? Just kind of rolls around. It doesn't, it does not get absorbed by the wing. It's really remarkable. Look at that. I've got a huge bead of water and it, it just won't get absorbed by the wing. So that wing then should be dry when you touch it. Is it? It is. It should, how about that? Uh -huh. dry. Uh -huh. So I'll bet some of these morpho butterflies live in the rainforest. Uh, yeah, does that kind of form a protective surface? They have a, something called a cuticle. It's largely waxes. Interesting. Well, the other thing that's going on here is water is a liquid that has a very high surface tension. And basically for the purposes of this experiment, what that means is it's tough for water to spread out. Water doesn't like to spread out. It likes to stay collected together like you might see here on this drop that's on the wing. In this essence, we say water beads up. And the reason why this is happening on the wing is because in order for the water to spread into the wing, it's gonna to have to fill all these tiny crevices in between the lamellae. And in order to do that, it's got to spread through all of these crevices, through millions of lamellae. And because water has a high surface tension and it doesn't like to spread out, it doesn't do that. Instead, it beads up on the surface of the wing. Now, we can try another liquid. Let's try, say, alcohol. Alcohol has a low surface tension. Clayton, you think I should do this here or, or uh, overhead cam or? Down there's fine. Down there's fine, okay. So I'm gonna take some, this is 91% isopropyl alcohol, 70% will work well, as well, I should say. And I'm just gonna drip some of this onto the wing. Alcohol has a low surface tension. Look at that. It spread. I'm seeing a bunch going on. Not only is it spreading into the wing, but I'm seeing a color change. I, depending on how I hold it, let's get the water off of there. Depending on how I hold the wing and how it interacts with light, I'm seeing colors that range from a greenish blue to green all the way to red. The color of the wing has changed. Now what might be going on there? Well, you remember I told you that in between the lamellae, these areas, we can imagine the lamellae as my fingers, and we'll imagine air in between my fingers, you know, that's gonna represent the air between the lamellae. If that air gets filled with something else, like alcohol, mm -hmm. that'll change the way that the light interacts with the structures. And that's gonna change the way the light hits the wing and bounces into our eye. And we see that now the wing is no longer blue, because the alcohol has seeped into the uh, air pockets in the lamellae, we see the color of the wing has changed. Let's, you know what? I think it might be evaporating off here. Let's yeah. see if we can help it a little bit. Well, I blew it right off. I messed up my experiment. I'm gonna try to get the 
alcohol to evaporate off of the wing by blowing on it. See if I can restore the blue color. I think it's working. Yes. I think we working. can see evidence that the alcohol is evaporating away. Why don't you try it there, Dr. Bradovich? Is it working? Oh yeah. Well, maybe I wetted that one a little more. Slowly. Huh? Yeah, it, it takes a little while. If you, you know, if you don't have any alcohol, you can try some other stuff. One, uh, is that alcohol? I think I just squirted alcohol in there. Yeah. <laughs> Accident. Do you mind Dr. Baldwin getting me a uh, cup of water? Oh, we got one here. You want we got water a cup, or we got a, water? what I say, water? You, you we got a cup of water, water here. And one way you can lower the surface tension of water is to add a little bit of soap. So let's add some soap and see what happens if we add soapy water to our wing. All right, let's see. I'm gonna mix this around. All right, my water's soapy now. We'll get a fresh butterfly wing. I'm gonna pop the soapy water on here. Let's see what happens. Oh, it's kind of, no, it's, look at that. It's not beating up. It's soaking into the wing. And I'm seeing it, from my angle, I'm seeing a green color develop. What color are you seeing from your angle, Dr. Bradovich? Green. Green as well. That's really beautiful. Depending on how the wing hits the light, I'm seeing colors that range from kind of a cyan, a little bit bluish green, all the way to kind of a lime green, and then there's a forest green in between. And it depends on the way the light is hitting the wing that uh, makes the color change just a little bit. That's really cool. Well, speaking of cool, oh. Really? There's Let's try putting some cool. liquid nitrogen on this, yeah? Oh, yeah. Let's try that. Okay, for this, we'll probably have to use uh, the overhead cam because I won't be able to hold the Petri dish and angle it to the camera. So let's, let's hope this works. We'll place a couple of wings down here. We'll pour in the liquid nitrogen and see what happens. Here we go. Oh, wow. Look at that. I saw it turn green. Yeah, yeah did you? Yeah, it's green. Try it again. It's big time green. And then, you know what? The liquid nitrogen should evaporate away quite easily. That looks blue to me. Well, it depends on which, which angle I see it at. I'll try to move this yeah, around Yeah, it's kind here. of blue green. Depending that on- That one's the, green. Yeah. Mama Good call, Dr. Baldwin, to the rescue. Now we can move it around and maybe see the way the color changes as I change the way the light is interacting with the wing. And maybe, well, this has got a lot of liquid nitrogen in yeah. it. This one's, this one's probably going to, look at that. Oh, uh, yeah. Wow, that went right to blue when all that stuff evaporated away. Let me pour some of that out. We'll pour it onto the paper towel there. Oh boy, I really got a lot in there. We'll try the same here. Whoop, look at that. <laughs> you can see, you can see me blow it right off. Yeah. And back to blue it goes. Well, while you're at home, you should feel free to do all sorts of experiments with our butterfly wings. You might try sugar water. You might try salt water. There's a whole lot of different things you can try. You know, be sure, please, to send us some pictures, if you like, of the bones that you found when you were looking at the owl pellets that Dr. Yeah. Bradovich was looking at. Be sure to send us some pictures of your experiments with the butterfly wings. We love getting those pictures. We've been posting some of them to our uh, Cougar Science Camp Facebook page. We love to see them. We love to share them with others. And uh, thanks for tuning in today.
We'll see you tomorrow for our last day of camp, two shows. The first one's at nine o'clock, and then we're going to have a one o'clock show after that where Dr. Baldwin is going to teach you how to do some sunlight photography. You're not going to want to miss that. So we'll see you tomorrow morning, folks. Bye.